Dicey Dungeons, a roguelike game about rolling dice and beating up mice. Well, I mean technically it's a rat, but close enough. The premise of the game is that five complete smooth brains have decided to sign up to Lady Luck's epic game show, where they can win a wish of their choice. But to their shock, they are turned into dice and forced to fight through these dungeons for what seems like the rest of their lives. This video will go over a lot of the different aspects of the game, and multiple reasons why I would recommend you play it. And don't worry, I will try to make this video as spoiler free as possible so you can enjoy the surprises yourself. Right, let's roll. In this game, there are five characters to choose from, each with their own strategies and equipment. Every one of them has a unique passive ability and a limit break that they can activate once they take a certain amount of damage. The first of these characters you get is the Warrior. He's fairly simple to play but can deal a lot of damage if you get smooth rolls. His passive ability is Combat Roll, where you can drag a dice into it and re-roll it. This skill can be used up to three times each turn. His limit break is Fury, where if activated, causes the next attack you drag your dice into to happen twice. Thankfully, Combat Roll is not affected by this skill, so you don't need to worry about wasting your fury on it. Second is the Thief. While the Warrior was your average Texas resident, the Thief is your average London citizen. This is made clear by their fighting styles. While the Warrior wants higher rolls so he can smack his foes with a combination of fury, the Thief wants lower rolls for his shift so he can repeatedly shank the enemy. However, high rolls aren't disastrous for the Thief because he can either split them with his lockpick or possibly use them with his passive, which involves him borrowing a random piece of the enemy's equipment every turn. His limit break is unlucky roll, which allows him to roll an extra four wands, which you can use to stab your opponents even more than usual. Next up is the Robot. If you enjoy playing Blackjack, then this is the character for you. Rather than rolling a set number of dice, the Robot's passive makes it so you have to press a button to roll a dice. Whatever value you roll with this dice will be added to the total. If this total goes over the target, you go bust and all your equipment disappears for this turn. However, if you match the target exactly, you get the jackpot and are given a choice of three effects to apply for free. This risk and reward type system easily makes the robot the most unique playable character out of the five. But if you're an unlucky person, then fear not. The robot's limit break automatically rolls dice to match the target and give you the jackpot. The final character is the witch, the character that makes me want to smack my head against a wall. This little purple cube has caused me nothing but grief and misery during the entire time I've been playing this game. Look at the number of wins I have in a bonus round. I mean, not bad, not bad. But, but then look at what I had to go through to get those wins. It was an absolute nightmare. Countless hours of my life I will never get back because of some frail, stupid, spellcasting piece of if I'm being honest, she's very fun to play, I'm just I'm just not that good. The Witch's passive revolves around her having a spell book rather than a backpack to hold her equipment in. These spells need to be created by paying a dice with the correct number, allowing you to place them in one of four spell slots. These carry over like normal equipment, however, with a lot of dice you can repeatedly use a spell and then create another to use in the same turn. A Limit Break helps with this by rolling another three dice. Despite my previous complaints, her passive allows her to throw unused dice at the enemy, meaning you can create moments like this. Right, uh, I think that was everyone. Let's have a look here. Oh, 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 oh no. I fear no man, but that thing, it scares me. No, I, I, ain't, I ain't talking about that freak, all right? He's not here, is he? How do we get this f***ing thing off? One shudders to imagine what inhuman thoughts lie behind that mask. What dreams of chronic and sustained cruelty. I really like this character. The inventor is probably my favourite character in this game for one reason, her passive, where after every fight you have to scrap a weapon in your arsenal. However, depending on which weapon you choose, you can make many different gadgets which are free to use during combat at merely a press of a button. This mechanic makes all the items in your backpack feel useful as you have to manage which weapons you want to keep for the boss of the dungeon and so have to buy or find enough items to scrap instead of those more valuable ones. On top of this, you have to decide which gadget would be most useful in said boss battle, allowing you to set up large combos of items and gadgets to do huge amounts of damage, just like you saw earlier. 
which is helped by her limit break, literally turning all of your dice into sixes. On the topic of characters, the enemies in this game all have their separate personalities and all have unique voice acting, making every foe you fight more memorable. These enemies include Private Ryan, Angry Vegan, a literal frog, God, the cutest character in the game, and whose name also happens to be Cornelius. You've already seen most of the gameplay mechanics in the previous section. You roll some dice, then put them into different weapons to whack enemies with different amounts of damage. However, this game isn't just about beating the life out of your foes, it's also about resource management and careful planning. Every time you start a game, you choose a character and are thrown into a dungeon containing six floors. How do you win? Well, by getting to the sixth floor and slaying the boss. The first floor starts off pretty simple. Two weak enemies to fight. Beat one, loot the chest, and beat up the other, and oh, look, you leveled up. Leveling up in this game fully restores your health, gives you a plus four bonus to your maximum health, and also gives you a special bonus, with the most common reward being an extra dice for you to roll. Or in the robot's case, more CPU so you can become the gaming PC you always dreamed of being. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that, man. Oh, no. Oh no, not again boys, no! After getting that sweet, sweet level up, you head to the next floor and oh god, there's more of them. You go and fight the first enemy, maybe get a little bruised, and then realise you have to fight another enemy to get to the next level. This may seem difficult at first, but then you spot out of the corner of your eye. A half-priced Granny Smith's apple from Lidl. You go over to take a bite and restore a decent chunk of health. With your confidence restored, you stride forward towards the next foe, and think, hmm, maybe this won't be so bad after all. Once you vanquish this enemy and get your third level up, you move on to beat up the next foe on this floor. Have a munch on another apple and... Wait, is that a shot? Oh brilliant, you can finally use that gold you were getting from beating up enemies and didn't really notice until now. You purchase the coolest looking item and move through the trapdoor to the third floor. Rinse and repeat on the third floor. Slap your foes, get your vitamins and buy new things. But what's this? A smithy who can upgrade one of your pieces of equipment for completely free? What a chad. But wait, you got to level 4 but then realised, you could just walk on through to the next floor. However, there is another enemy just sitting next to it. Do you kill him to get more XP? Or do you march through to conserve your health? If you decide to fight this enemy and all other foes, you'll be rewarded the very last enemy with a level up to max level just before the boss fight. If you decide to skip past this man, you're probably going to want to skip past a few others. While being of lower risk in the short term, you may find yourself unprepared for the boss fight. Whatever decision you make, as long as you beat the boss you will complete the episode. From here you could try one of six challenges each character has. Some of my personal favourites being the inevitability of rust on the inventor where every piece of equipment you have has a certain amount of uses, and worse than the curse on the warrior, where every time you level up, you lose 2 max health instead of gaining 4. This chance based dungeon crawling adventure the game offers is extremely fun and no matter how painful the loss is, make sure to come back and give the challenge another go every time. Damn, the music in this game is so good. It captures every moment so perfectly. The simpleness of the early fights, the increased intensity of later fights, and the high stakes every boss fight holds. It's all just amazing. If you can't play the game, you can at least listen to this incredible soundtrack created by Chipsaw, as well as their other music, because they just smash out of the park with every track. If I were to pick my favourite track out of this diverse selection, I'd probably have to say Swimming in Over 6, the one you're listening to right now. I'd also recommend literally any of the boss themes. Elimination Round, Bonus Round, Lifeline, Fortune Favours the Bold, are all just so great. Probably one of my favourite aspects of this game. So overall, great gameplay, great music, great characters, just a great game overall. If you haven't played it, then I would highly recommend you do. The fact that it's one of the few games in my Steam library that I took the time to 100% just shows how much I enjoyed this. And I think that you will too. Oh, and if for some reason any of the people working on the game see this video, please move the witch in the next update.